Okay, first, uh, the first few seconds, I'm just showing like the finished um, rendering of, of the saucer. And um, you can see how it's all shiny and colored and everything, a nice background, simple background. Um, okay, now let's get started with how I actually did that. So if we watch, um, the first thing I did is I shrunk this down. I just did a uh, scale on the z-axis to make it a little flatter because I thought it was a little uh, too, too tall to really get that 1950s uh, flying saucer effect. And what we're going to look at now is how to set this up. Um, so the first thing I'm showing here is you can sh display the different ways to display the, the image. You can do a bounding box, which is just the space that it takes up, a wireframe, all the way up to rendering. We're going to do rendered because uh, that's what we want to see, the uh, materials that we're going to use and how that looks and how the lighting um, affects it. If you look up at the top, we're using Cycles Render. That's important. Um, there's a Blender Render, which it'll start out with, but that is the old one. And if you're just learning it, uh, Cycles is where to go. A little bit more advanced. Um, okay, now what we're going to do here is to change the background from that kind of ugly gray. Well, I'm showing now the... There it is in Blender Render. And over to Cycles Render. Okay, next thing we're going to do is um, change the world. This is going to change the background color from that uh, kind of mucky gray to getting towards black. So that's just our background color, and that is in that little uh, series of uh, choices that you see. It's the world. So that's just basically the background. We can do different things there, but this is the simplest. Okay, next we're going to go to our materials, and in materials we're going to make a new one. And you can see that we can change the color all across the spectrum there. Here's a green version. And we'll leave it there for now. You can change roughness a little bit. There's a few other things we can do here, but the more um, complete thing, we'll use another window um, which has more, more ability to um, control. But this is fine if we're just doing a very, very simple um, material, just like a color. Okay, next thing we're going to do is um, go over, and in this little lower left-hand corner, you'll see a choice of different um, editors. And the one we're in now is the 3D view. That's where we've been so far. But there's also a bunch of other ones. We're going to be using the node editor. And the node editor, there it is. Um, show is right now showing us the same information that we saw in the material selection over there, showing we got the colors green, and the, and the roughness setting, and it shows that it's connected to the output. And we'll go back to 3D view. Now to really work on this, it's going to be very convenient to see both at the same time. So we can split the screen up at that little triangle, drag it, drag it out to the left. That'll give us two windows. Blender, you can do this as many times as you want. Um, and we'll change this window to the node editor. We can use the um, end key to get rid of that extra stuff on the uh, right that we don't need. And you can see in here I can change the color And so on. We're going to need to do something more, a little more complicated, though, because we want to now give it um, reflection. So right now we can give it a color, but it looks kind of flat, and um, we need we need this flying saucer to look a little bit more um, shiny, if that's the right word. At the very least, we might even later on do other things like make it emit um, little particles and stuff like that, or do ray guns. So we're going to add another node, which is going to be the glossy node. And what the glossy node does, if we connect it to our output, as you can see, it makes it glossy. Now the colors disappeared because we can only connect one 
node to the output at a time. And so in order to get around that problem, we're going to add another um, node in a minute. Right now I'm just changing um, the roughness, and that'll affect it from being real metallic to being kind of a flat, uh, more diffuse. Uh, so let's leave it around there someplace. Okay, now let's get the color reconnected, and to do that, we'll just disconnect the glossy. There's the color again, so I can go back and forth. To do both, though, um, Shift A gets me all this stuff, and I'm going to look for the mix shader. There it is, and that's just what it sounds like. I can mix different inputs and connect the mix shader to the output, and then we'll be able to get a mixture of um, color and and uh, specular or shiny. Delete it, disconnect it from there. Now there's no material because it's not connected to the output. Put it back to the surface, and now you can see that I, I'm getting color. And that shiny spot is there. And if I change the color, they're independent. Usually, specular, the shiny stuff is white. Most materials, that's what they, what the, the shiny spot reflects all the light, so it usually looks white in most cases. So usually, you leave that alone. And you change the color of the uh, diffuse. So there we go. I'm getting like a pretty nice uh, reflection there, and the color. Uh, the one thing that I did that I didn't show here is I changed the, if you look on the left, the shading for the object and I made that smooth and so that the, the image that you see at the very beginning is when I did the smooth shading and it took out those facets and made it look uh, nice and smooth and shiny and spacey.